Okay, so this first section uh, about the Earth kind of just goes over the overview and the Earth's interior. And uh, since the Earth is the first planet we'll study, then I want to just talk about all the factors about Earth that we will compare to other planets. So the size of the Earth, well, it has one solar mass and one solar radius worth of size. Um, its density is 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed. This number would be one if the Earth was made of only water. So this higher density means that Earth is a rocky and metallic planet. Um, our orbital period is 365.25 days because our semi-major axis is 1 AU. And our rotation period is one day. And then like we just went over, the orbital tilt, axial tilt is 23.4 degrees. So we'll come back to the values for all the other planets as we go throughout the term. All right, so um, when we look inside the Earth, we talked about last time that as planets formed, um, they were basically in an environment of constant collision early in the solar system. And so our early planetesimals were basically just hot balls of molten rock. And as, um, as the Earth cooled, um, well, it differentiated while it was fluid. So the heavier elements fell toward the core of the Earth, whereas the lighter elements uh, floated toward the surface, resulting in this differentiated structure. And as the Earth cooled, it locked in this structure. So even though there is still some um, fluid parts of the Earth's interior, uh, this overall layered structure is not changing. Earth has a really thin crust, followed by a pretty thick mantle, and then an inner and outer core. And how do we even know that this is the case? Well, we have to probe the Earth somehow in order to measure this, but we obviously can't just dig down because our instruments would melt. So instead, we use seismic waves to map out the interior structure. Um, seismic waves uh, have two different types. There's P waves and S waves. Both of them are created by earthquakes. So at the Earth's surface, earthquakes happen, and then those waves travel through the interior of the Earth, and we measure them at different points on its surface. And if I, um, I can look at a slinky to illustrate the difference between these two different kinds of waves. Um, P waves um, are kind of called pressure waves. They pulsate in the same direction as the wave moves. So here it would be like sending a pulse straight down a slinky. Whereas if I shake a slinky side to side, that's an S wave. And the S wave, the, um, the wave crest is perpendicular to the direction of wave motion. So I like to think of these as P waves as the pulse wave and S wave is the shaking side to side wave. Um, so if we look at these S waves, the shaking side to side waves, these are blocked by liquids um, because the liquid sort of absorbs the energy of the wave in this configuration, but P waves, the pulsing waves, those are not blocked by liquids. So P waves will pass through liquids in the Earth's interior, but S waves will be blocked. They also have different travel times, which is helpful because then we can measure the timing of when waves created by the same earthquake reach different locations on Earth. That gives us info about the sizes of things in the interior. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a complicated graphic, but it's not as complicated as you think. Let's let our S waves be these little pink waves and the P waves are these straight blue lines. If I have an earthquake that is created at this very left side of planet Earth, then it's going to create both S waves and P waves. And if I have a bunch of different people all over the planet measure when those waves get there and what kind of waves they receive, then I can map out the interior structure of the Earth. So notice that my observers way over here on the right side of the Earth are not measuring any S waves. They're only measuring P waves. But for some of our observers closer to the epicenter of our earthquake, they're receiving both kinds of waves. So the logical step toward mapping the interior is that we remember that our S waves, these pink waves, they cannot travel through liquid. So what, is, what does this mean about the composition of our outer core? Okay, it looks like now we are unanimously in agreement that if the S waves can't travel through liquid, 
Well, it looks like they're not traveling through the outer core, so the outer core must be made of liquid. So this is correct. Um, the mantle is also somewhat fluid, um, but it's a, a little bit complicated. The mantle still has some motion in it, but it's not a, a liquid in the same way that the outer core is. So this liquid outer core is really important because this is what's responsible for creating Earth's magnetic field. 